there are a lot of priests here, and I just thought maybe we would just introduce them very quickly at this time. But I'd like to just say thank you to Father Henry Petters, pastor here at St. Anne's, also to Father Paul Bechter, the parochial vicar. Thank you for hosting us here today. I'd like to also say thanks to Father Leonard, um, who is here. He's the vocation director for the Diocese of Dallas and also a former priest at St. Rita's. Also, a gospel was read today for, by Father Michael Higgins, who was my novice director, and also Father Nathan Malavoltes and Father John Mark. The three of us were classmates. He was our novice director, but Father Michael also served for six years as our minister general in Rome, six years before that as the vicar general in Rome. So his Italian is very fluent. And then also here is Father James Gelati, who is now pastor of St. Andrews in Fort Worth and was the pastor of St. Maria Gretti in Arlington when I was ordained a priest. So thank you, Father Jim, for coming. And for Father Michael Siski, um, also who is a good friend and a pastor, uh, a vicar, the parochial vicar now at St. Maria Gretti. So thank you also to Father Ron Manicki, who is here. He is also a parochial vicar, a good shepherd. Did I leave anybody out? Father John Mark? Okay. He's also a parochial vicar at Good Shepherd. All right. That only took two minutes, right? So thank you, Father Petters and my fellow priests and Franciscan friars, family and friends, and, and all who have joined us here today via live streaming. You know, a few days ago, several sisters of mine wrote a very beautiful obituary about our mother. And then they, they posted it online. Perhaps some of you are here or viewing online have been able to read it. If you did, you learned that, that our mother, our grandmother, our friend, she was born in Chicago, Illinois, the second oldest of three children. She grew up through the, during the Great Depression and World War II, and then after that, off to secretarial school, and then a company where she met our father and fell in love. And shortly after they married, they started a family, and several years later, they moved here to Dallas, Texas, where most of our family still lives. But about five, six years after moving to Dallas, some friends introduced them to the Catholic Charismatic Renewal, which really changed their life forever. And it deepened their faith. And through the grace and the power of the Holy Spirit, they came to know and to love their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in a deeper way. And as we heard in today's gospel, Jesus became for them, like the disciples, the way, the truth, and the life. You might say that he became their guiding star, their true north, if you will. They began to reorient their spiritual lives in a new way to search and follow most closely God's way, God's truth, and God's life. And as they did, they began to show their children and others the way, the way of giving and serving, the way of love and compassion, the way of really trusting in God's providence. Giving and serving were at the cores of, core of my mom's being. You know, it was what she loved to do with her time, especially after her children were grown and, and our father had passed away. She visited and prepared meals for the sick and the bereaved. She became an extraordinary minister at St. Rita's Catholic Church and brought the Blessed Sacrament to the homebound. She, even, she volunteered and served whenever someone was in need. She even engaged in prayer for the unborn and their mothers outside abortion clinics for many years. It was, in fact, outside of one of them that she passed out one time. And they said, who, Leona, who should we call? Well, I've got a son who's a priest in Ohio. And they called me. 
And I said, Mom, you've got six other siblings in Dallas. <laughs> you should think of them next time. Well, and she, when she wasn't helping someone or at the abortion clinic, she was participating in Bible studies with her friends, attending daily mass as much as she could, and participating in a weekly charismatic meeting with the Christian community of God's delight. When she wasn't doing that, she spent much of her time visiting and caring for her children and then her grandchildren. She hosted countless parties for family and friends, for birthdays and anniversaries, for holiday celebrations and graduations and the like. She even traveled the world with her children and her siblings and her relatives off to Europe, the Holy Land, South America, Australia, and even more. That was her life, and that too was her way. But there was one more person she loved to serve and spend time with. And that was her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who she praised all the time. Praise be Jesus Christ, she would say daily to us. And just one example of mom's love for God was revealed in an entry from her prayer journal that my sister Lynn found recently, dated November 24th, 2012. And mom wrote, what can I write to the Lord? I know. I can write about how much you love me. And I may be writing this every day for years to come. And Lord, what should I tell my children? Ah, I know. I will tell them how much I love each one of them. It is the most important thing. I will speak truth to them too. They need to know, matter, no matter what happens in their lives, that their ever-loving God loves them. May they never forget that, regardless of what happens. And I will remind them that their ever-loving God can bring the best through it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You have given me the best. And I love you with your holy divine love that you have given to me. These are simple words from a simple woman to her loving God. But they are profound, too. They express a deep trust in Jesus during troubling times. In today's gospel, Jesus' disciples also felt troubled when they heard that Jesus was about to leave them. So Jesus tells his disciples, don't let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. I know that my mom had that faith, especially when her husband and our father passed away. At that time, Mom was in her young 50s. She had three children in high school, three more in college, three of us in our mid-20s. On the one hand, she was unsure how as a single parent and a non-breadwinner, she would find her way through this loss. So she did the only thing she knew how to do. She trusted in God's providence with all her might. And the good Lord showed her the way and provided for the family's needs. And for that, we are eternally grateful. One example of her gratitude occurred around 1990, about five years after our father passed away. Out of the blue, mom received the check for $2,500 from the bank that provided the mortgage loan on her home. It was the refund of the escrow on the loan which the bank was returning because the 25-year loan was now paid in full. Mom couldn't believe it because she'd always thought it was a 30-year loan. <laughs> she thought she still had five more years of monthly payments. So how does she celebrate this good news? Like the story of the widow's mite, she took the $2,500 to her parish as a sign of her gratitude to the Lord. Little did she know, she now has to make the, the property taxes every year. They just happen to be $2,500. <laughs> but ever since she told me that story, I would always think of her. Every time I proclaimed and preached the gospel story about the widow's might, that time when Jesus was in a temple and he noticed a poor widow putting in two small coins 
which made almost no noise in the collection basket. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you truly, this poor widow has put in more than all the rest. For those others who have made offerings from their surplus, but she in her poverty has offered her whole livelihood. And like that widow, I don't think my mom ever told anybody that story but me. Once again, mom was showing us the way, the way to trust in God and humility. As you know or begin to see the way of Jesus, it's not just a, a geographical place, some kind of physical road to walk down. Rather, the way is a process of becoming a person whose whole life reflects the truth and the life that Jesus reveals to us. It's a person who totally identifies with the vision and the values of Jesus. Likewise, truth cannot be understood purely in an intellectual way. Truth is that complete integrity and harmony which Jesus reveals to each one of us. Not only what he says, but also in his life in person. His thoughts, his feelings, his actions, his relationships. That was Jesus' way. And mom sought to make that her way. You know, after her mortgage loan was paid, she lived there in that house for about another 25 years. But as the years wore on, the house became increasingly difficult for her to keep up, even with the help of her daughter, Lynn, who lived there and assisted her for many years. It was time to find a new home. That's where her daughter, Jenny, and son-in-law, Kurt, and family came in. They opened their house and family to mom for the past six years of her life. And so it was Leona's home too. But as her dementia began, continued to develop, there came a time when she began to say that she wants to go home. Sometimes we thought she was referring to her home that she had just sold. Other times, she was talking about the home where she grew up in Chicago, Illinois, because she thought she was 21 years old again and her parents were still alive. But when she was lucid and in the present moment, her desire to go home usually referred to heaven. She wanted to go home to be with God and all her family and friends who had gone before her. This is what Jesus meant when he told his disciples a few days before he died that he was going to his father's house where there would be many dwelling places, places he was preparing for them so that he could come back and bring them to himself. And as the end drew near for mom more and more, we knew that that was where she wanted to be too. And so that's what we as a family told her in her final months, especially in her final days and hours. Go mom, go to God and go to dad. Because in so many ways, like St. Paul, we heard today, mom, you fought the good fight. You have finished the race. You have kept the faith. May you now, too, receive that crown of righteousness that is promised to all who believe in him. And so a week ago, she left us for that dwelling place in heaven. That our family likes to think our dad may be assisted in building for her. And maybe even a dance floor, too. I say that because yesterday was their second, second, 62nd anniversary of our parents' marriage. And in our mind and in our imagination, we like to believe that yesterday they danced with joy as they stood on their wedding day. So thank you, Mom, on behalf of all of us. Thank you, Leona. Thanks once again for your faith and love. Thank you for your support through thick and thin. Thank you for believing in us when we struggled to believe in ourselves. And thank you for showing us the way.